All right. What I want to take, we want to make our, our web app a little bit better. Okay. So if I do, let me close this for now. If I do click create entry, we're just typing in the habit of mind. And you all saw me struggle to type in the word interdependently. Um, so imagine if we're trying to actually like sort stuff or count how many items we have for different habits of mind. Um, it would be much better if we could just choose from among all the habits of mind here rather than typing it in. So I'm gonna show you how we can do something like that in a web application. And this is also a convenient time to show you how we can have like static data and easily load that into our JavaScript code. Um, so in back in our oops, file explorer here, um, there's a folder we haven't looked at much. Um, inside of the server folder is a model folder. And inside the model folder, is a file called habitsofmind.json, okay? So I've already created this for us. Um, and if we look, we can see it starts with a square bracket um, and it has a whole bunch of strings, one for each habit of mind, ends with a square bracket. So this is the JSON that represents a JavaScript array of strings, okay? This is, I, always, I have mixed feelings on JavaScript. I think I've been transparent about that, but, I love that this feature that I can type a JSON file with date, like static data that I want. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how we can in a single line of code, pull that into a JavaScript file and have it be um, a variable, which is so super convenient. So let's, let's do that. Um, so we're gonna go to um, router.js go back to router.js um, and we're going to pull this data into this JavaScript file. Um, so let's see, where do we want to do that? Let's do it right up here at the top. We're going to create a new variable called habits of mind. And here is how we can assign this um, to be a reference of an array of all those strings that we saw. We use the require function again, like we use to load node modules, but instead of loading a node module, we're going to specify the path um, to th that JSON file. So we're in router.js and we wanna go to habits of mind. So we this is a partial path. So we start with two dots, you may, thinking back to like our introduction to like Linux and Raspberry Pi stuff, two dots goes like up one directory, it goes to the parent directory. So we're inside of routes, but after two dots, we're now inside of the server folder. And then we can specify model, and then we can specify habits of mind.json. So that will load that JSON file, automatically convert it to an array of strings, and assign it to this variable habits of mind. So I'm going to add a comment above this because this is something we may want to reference later. This is an easy way to assign static data, in this case an array of strings, to a variable. Big fan of this feature. Now that we have this data, we want to actually use it in the in the construction and the rendering of our HTML page. So far, everything we've done with EJS, we could have just done with standard HTML. We haven't actually done anything dynamically yet. So let's actually do something dynamically in terms of creating um, a bunch of like radio buttons related to all the different habits of mind. So down here on line 16 is where we invoke the render method um, on the response and we pass in the index. Um, we can actually pass an additional parameter to the render method, which is variables that we want to pass to the EJS file. And the way we do that is we pass a, a reference to an object. So I'm going to add a curly bracket here to create an object right in line here. Um, and this object will just have a variety of properties where each property will be a variable that's accessible in the EJS file. So in the EJS file, we're going to refer to a variable called habits. So that is the name of the property. And then the value for that property 
is going to be the variable that's in scope here, which is habits of mind. So this can be this can be a little confusing because we're specifying two different variable names. The the object's attribute name, the I'm sorry, the object's property name, try to be consistent with my terminology. The object's property name is the variable name that will reference in the EJS file and the value of that property is the variable that's in scope in this javascript file, okay? So it's basically like we're passing an argument like we're accustomed to doing, but we have to specify with which like parameter it goes. That's an analogy you could make. Yeah. If you do what? Maybe like it would assign it to the same name. Yeah. It, yeah, I think, I don't know. Try it, see what happens. <laughs> All right, so now we've passed a variable. So that means we can now go to our EJS file, create entry.ejs, and now we have access to a new variable that we didn't have before, okay? Um, so we're gonna actually get rid of this whole line of code where we had the input text box where we typed the habit of mind, we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna replace it with some dynamic HTML. We're gonna have a series of radio buttons, um, but we need to group them together such that the user can only select one of the many radio buttons. So we do that with the field set element. So there's our field set element. And then we want to give basically um, a label to the set of radio buttons. And the element we use for that is called legend. So some new HTML for us today. I'm gonna to label this collection of radio buttons habit of mind. And then here is where we would create a whole bunch of input elements of type radio. And we could do this for like 15, 16 times, um, but that would be really tedious. And we don't need to do that because we have a variable with all the values we have. So what we're gonna do instead is actually insert some like JavaScript code within our EJS file. So we do that with a special tag that says, hey, here starts the JavaScript. That's the less than and the percent symbol. And then we actually just type JavaScript code. So I can say for let habit of habits. Here's like our enhanced for loop to iterate through every element in the array habits. This is the variable that we specified in the previous JavaScript file in router.js. And I'm gonna create um, another variable called habit ID because we need some sort of an identifier that we can refer to to know like which button was selected. Um, and the way I'm gonna create this identifier is I need it to be like all like one word without spaces and stuff. So I am going to take this particular habit of mind, which could very well have spaces, and I'm going to invoke the replace all method, and I'm gonna replace all spaces with underscores. And then I'm going to close my for statement here. So here's a couple lines of JavaScript with a special delimiter saying, hey, here's my embedded JavaScript code. Now I'm gonna type some normal HTML code. We're gonna have a label, which I'll do in a moment. Um, and then we're going to have an input and our input will be of type radio and it will be of class habits and it will have a name. I'm forgetting all my equal signs. Let me go back and fix that. Type equals radio class equals habits, name equals habits. And then the value is going to equal, this is where we now need to put um, another EJS tag to basically say, hey, we're gonna do a variable substitution here. And so let me do this on another line just so it's easier for everyone to see. 
So we do less than, percent sign, equal sign. These three characters delineate the start of a variable substitution. And I'm going to put in habit ID and then percent greater than to finish that off. And that is the end of my input tag. What this means is when we render this page, the highlighted text will be replaced with the current value of the variable ha habit ID. This is how we do our dynamic HTML. The label for this radio button will be habit. So again, I've used the same sequence of characters to delineate here's a variable substitution for EJS. These characters will be replaced by the current value of the variable habit. And we're going to look at the rendered HTML in a moment so you can actually like see what this looks like. All right, so we had a for loop up here with an opening curly bracket, so we need to close that curly bracket. So again, we use our, say, oops, here's our, some more JavaScript code. It's just a curly bracket, and we're done with that. So you'll notice that the opening delimiter is a little bit different for a variable substitution. You'll see the equal sign versus JavaScript code. So two different types of delineation. So I'm going to delete that other closing bracket, and there's my close of my field set. There we go. Oh, they formatted it nicer for me. Great. When I saved it. This is how we generate HTML dynamically um, with EJS, and it is incredibly powerful to do so um, and saves us. It really, this is what enables like an actual web application, which is great. Um, let's see what this looks like. Okay. So if I go back to Chrome, and I want to go back to my home page here and click on create entry. We'll see that I made a mistake. Let's see. Habits is not defined. Interesting. I thought I did that. I wonder if it didn't reload. The router? Oh, there's a lot going on here. Oh, that's the same error. Habits, habits of mind. Let me see if I forgot something else. Refresh, refresh, definitely not happy. I restart my node client, see if that helps. It's not defined. Hmm. Do you have to what? I'm sorry. I think I just pass it in and that's it. Wait, did I pass it in the wrong place? Let's go back to router. Oh, there we go. All right. Wow. Um, so I pass the variable habits when rendering the page index, which is great, but that's not the page we're trying to do. So I'm going to cut this code and I'm going to paste it down here because we need to share the variable habits when we're rendering the page create entry. Apologies. I, ugh, that's rough. All right, let's try this again. So much better. Okay. Now we have a bunch of radio buttons. I don't think this is the best user interface, but it works. I think a pop-up menu would be better. That's a more sophisticated um, UI element that we aren't gonna focus on right now. 
but at least now I can click here and choose a date. I like that. I can choose thinking interdependently and not have to type it, and then I can hit my submit thing. So um, we're getting better. Yeah. In here? We're going to add one more thing, um, which is we now need to adjust the JavaScript code running on the client. So we're going to go to create entry.js. Before, we were simply doing query selector to get the value of the input called habit of mind. This doesn't exist anymore. Um, so we're going to get rid of that. And instead, we are going to do a more sophisticated selector that selects all input elements of class habits. That are checked. Okay. So each like little feature we add, I'm trying to expose you just like something new that will be helpful later, um, either in our summative lab or, or next semester. So here is a, we're familiar with doing query selector. There's another function called query selector all. So I can create a variable called habit of mind buttons. And on the document, I can call query selector all instead. And I can do input dot habits. So remember, this is the element. This is the class. And then I can put in the colon to specify like matching on a property, which in this case is checked. So this query selector all is going to return all input elements of class habits that are checked. Okay. And then I'll say habit of mind, that variable equals, um, maybe they didn't check anything. So let's do habit of mind buttons dot length. If that is greater than zero, um, we're going to do like a little inline if else here with the ternary operator. I know I, I think I shared like last year in APCSA, we should never do this, but that's Java. This is JavaScript. It's kind of a mess anyway. Um, so question mark means um, if the thing on the left is true, then return the value here, which will be habits of mind buttons sub zero dot value. We just want to take the first element. We made them radio buttons. So we know they can only select one, but they might select zero. And if they do select zero, we'll just assign a value of null. So let's reformat that so it's easier for you all to read. So this means if the length is greater than zero, assign the value of the first element to the variable habit of mind, otherwise assign a value of null. And now if we go back to Chrome and refresh this page to get the latest code, we can choose a date. We can choose a habit of mind. We can type the entry and we can click submit. Oh, I didn't show you what the HTML looks like. Kind of got ahead of myself. Developer tools, sources, or elements. All right, so let's look at the actual HTML. I'm gonna spin this open a little bit. Here's the div, here's the field set. Cool. So here's the field set of all of our habit of mind radio buttons. And look at what is actually in the HTML document. Input type radio, class habits, name habits, value equals persisting, okay? Um, it's all like built in. And then here's the, here's the label, right? Look at the value here. Value equals managing underscore impulsivity. 
That's the JavaScript code we ran that converted the spaces to the underscores. So you can see how our little for loop in the EJS file generated all of this stuff, which is so cool. All right, this is definitely worth committing. Generate HTML dynamically for habits of mine radio buttons. 